Hey and welcome to Never Into With Aragon. So, Cryptic Studios have introduced back the Elite Refinement Pack, wherein we can obtain a choice pack of companions, which we can get the Xuna companion from. Now in this video I'd like to go over the drop rates of this said Elite Refinement Pack, and then if it's actually worth it to obtain it in terms of making a profit or if the companions might be worth it for your build. So where do we obtain this? Well in the supply section of the Zen market you can see when we scroll down we can obtain this elite refinement pack and when you go and purchase them and open them up there's a chance you will obtain this Neverwinter elite pack obtaining five different companions. Well, technically only four, since the Noxes are pretty much identical. I'll go over them a little bit later. Anyway, unfortunately when you purchase this pack, it will straight up be character bound. Meaning you won't be able to sell them on the auction house whatsoever, or even trade them between your characters. However, when you go and open these packs, you can obtain a variety of different enchantments between rank 10 to 14, along with obtaining some refinement points in the form of teal diamonds which is a pretty insane way to obtain refinement fairly easily and then you can just obtain those enchanting stones from rank 6 down to rank 3 and as we can see I have a few within my inventory and these are the variety of rewards which you obtain these whole bunch of different enchantments pretty much any of the ones there that are available to us and yeah mainly just rank 10s then you have these teal diamonds, and yeah, each diamond is worth 100,000 refinement points, meaning it's very easy to obtain a lot of these refinement points if you need to. If we currently look on the auction house, there is a lot of these teal diamonds. You can see you can purchase 10 of them for just under 100,000 astral diamonds. That means you can obtain a million refinement points for under 100,000 astral diamonds, which is a bit crazy. With that said, that's not really what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about this pack, the Elite Pack, with these different companions, where we have Celeste, Xuna, Makos, and Nox, all kind of the original characters, the ones you find within the trailer, but which we saw upon the release of Neverwinter. Now, as we can see here, there is Sergeant Knox and there's Alphonse Knox. Now, in terms of their combat capabilities, they're pretty much identical. The only difference is their enhancement and their defense power. They are a little bit different. You can see he will give you dulled senses and will also give you this Sergeant Knox's wisdom, which gives defense and accuracy. Whereas Alphonse Knox will give you perfect vision and he'll give you Alphonse's Knox's discipline, which gives critical severity and combat advantage. And the bonus is that he's legendary. Now, mainly people are obtaining this pack just for Xuna. The reason being is she's pretty much the best AoE companion we can obtain right now. And when we look at her in the auction house, we can see she's listed at above 5 million astral diamonds because of how good she actually is. Now we're going to go over her in a little bit. I've actually made a dedicated video to her specifically. I'll link it in the video description below. So I'm not going to go completely in depth on her. And we have the other companions there within this box as well. There is like Celeste, which when I went over my healing companions, I didn't actually test her out. And now I do have the opportunity to do so. However, little spoiler, she's nothing special. So we're going to jump over to the preview server where I go and open this pack and open a whole load of these refinement packs to see what kind of drop rate we get with this elite pack. So jumping over here on the preview server, I have went and opened a whole bunch of those refinement packs and we got a total of five of these Neverwinter elite packs when we went and opened a hundred of those elite refinement packs, meaning the drop rate seems to be about 5% or so. So if you really want to obtain this elite pack to let's say get Xuna, you're going to have to be looking at purchasing about 20 or so 
of these elite refinement packs. Of course, you could be unlucky and not even obtain one within that, or you could obtain one of those elite packs on your first pack you open. So I recommend if you're just trying to get this pack with Zen, just purchase them one by one and open them. Otherwise, of course, you can always jump to the auction house as people will be selling these packs. You can see they're pretty much the same price as, as Ixuna at above 5 million Astral Diamonds. Now, in regards to whether this is worth it, with it being on about 5% drop rate, well, if you consider having to purchase 20 of these Elite Packs, that's the equivalent of, if you purchase them at this sale of 15% off, 6,800 Zen. And that is the equivalent of just over 5 million Astro Diamonds. So, yeah. If you have the Zen, let's say from the Zen Exchange, you can, by all means, purchase these packs, get lucky, and obtain one of these Elite Packs for less than 5 million Astro Diamonds. Otherwise, if you just need a Ksuna, well, you're kind of stuck at having to spend 5 million Astro Diamonds. Alternatively, you can wait. Potentially, the price will go down, but it's unlikely. Otherwise, you don't really have to get an Ixuna. Like, she's not so much better than the other companions out there. There are quite a lot of competitive companions that do about the same amount of damage she does in AoE, if not a bit more in Pacific situations. The most beneficial thing about Xuna is the fact that she can hit multiple targets no matter where they are, at least within 30 feet, due to her Bloodbath ability, which is her main big hitting power. Whereas if you look at something like the Cold Iron Warrior, it has a spinning strike attack, and that spinning strike attack can only hit targets that are adjacent to him, and thus it's a, a not so good, because there's not like a high chance he's going to hit everything around him. Like Suna will jump just between targets, and make sure to always get all that damage off, even if her target dies, she'll just jump to the next one and do another one of those bloodbath hits. Now, as for are the other companions worth it, I've went and upgraded them to Mythic on my test build, and we've gone and tested them out. Now, first up, we went and tested out Alphonse Knox, and unfortunately, he's really nothing special whatsoever. When we look at his powers, he looks to be more of a tank character where he can effectively increase his damage resistance. Yes, unfortunately, that is just his damage resistance. And he has Will Not Fail, reducing incoming damage by 33%. And again, this is just for himself. So he's more of a tank companion. He just has a bit more survivability. And in my opinion, there's not a whole lot of point in that, unless he actually has threat powers which it doesn't seem to be the case, since we can easy peasy hold the threat off him. Now as for the amount of damage he does, well unfortunately he is really low on the charts there, at just over 8.5 thousand encounter DPS. And that's next to nothing when we look at other striker companions. So we have the other companions and we have Celeste herself. If we wanted to use Celeste, to deal damage for us, well, you'd be much better off using any other DPS companion. As, yeah, she does have a few attack powers and dazes and such that will affect your targets and will effectively make them deal less damage. But other than that, the overall amount of damage she deals is about 2.5 thousand encounter DPS. So, next to nothing. And we did go and test out her heal, and she has this sunburst ability and again it's very minimal it heals up to about 50,000 sure upon her cast however she'll only do it every 15 seconds it's nice that she'll affect everybody around you but again every 15 seconds a 50,000 heal that's um next to nothing and you're better off just using a companion like let's say the dedicated squire or even just the stalwart lion to help buff the damage or the damage resistance of your party and that's really it don't really recommend using celeste sure she's a uh, just a role play companion if you wanted to run with her quite novel to have her 
but she's not going to be too effective within combat whatsoever. So then we have Makus, and you'd expect him to be pretty decent. And since he's a true and true damage companion, his powers at least all say that they just deal damage, unfortunately his damage is very mediocre. Now if we look at his particular powers and such, we can definitely make out that he's for sure going to be an AoE companion, looking at this power right here. He'll like put these fireball meteors around everywhere and they don't necessarily hit the original target and thus it's more for AoE where you might hit those other monsters that are in those uh, blasts and unfortunately they also show up red so you might um, yeah frighten your allies a bit to have to dodge out of that but it won't harm you whatsoever. Now unfortunately looking at his encounter DPS we can see that he only deals just over 5800 encounter DPS which is next to nothing. Now of course this is on single target which is not his best position since those meteors don't tend to hit the original target very often and yeah he pretty much has one attack which is just fireball and then he summons those meteors which are again still firewalls so then we have sergeant Knox, and he's literally the same as alphonse Knox. there's literally no difference other than appearance sergeant Knox will just have this fashion where he's all armored up Let's go and actually summon him here. So Sergeant Knox is all armored up. He looks like this with his big battle axe. And then we have Alphonse Knox, who's a little bit less dressed up, right? He's wearing like leather armor. And again, he has that same great axe. And that's it. You don't really have any other of these skins which you can change him to. So he pretty much deals exactly the same amount of damage as or Alphonse Knox. So finally we have Suna and she's the most sought after one as she does a significant amount of damage and the most beneficial thing about her is when we jump into combat she'll straight away do her bloodbath and deal all those mighty hits. Meaning you can clear packs of mobs nice and quickly with her and then just move on to the next. But you want to make sure to summon her back again before you move on to the next pack of mobs as that will reset her bloodbath and she'll do it all again and then you jump to the next group of mobs resummon her attack and she'll do her bloodbath again you see what i mean it's really good if you want to go watch my dedicated video to her explaining more in depth about her you can i also show this keybind which allows you to summon and desummon her at will just like that and that's it really for this elite pack. Now lastly, I do need to mention the amount of DPS Xuna has. When we went and tested her out, we can see that she does about 29,000 encounter DPS. And this isn't the best of the best because we have the Cold Iron Warrior who actually has a little bit more encounter DPS, at least on single target, which is a totaling up to about 33,000 encounter DPS. However, Xuna has the advantage that it doesn't really matter where her targets are situated, she's still going to hit them with the bloodbath as long as they are within 30 feet. Whereas this Cold Iron Warrior, who has a lot of damage per second, has this spinning strike, but he'll only hit the enemies that are near him, and that's it. So if you have spread out groups of mobs, this spinning strike isn't going to hit all of them and thus isn't going to be as effective as let's say Xuna's attack power. And his spinning strike is also much later after his rotation. It's about, I believe, 10 seconds or so before he actually does that. Where Xuna is, as soon as you go into the fight, she does the bloodbath straight off the bat. So that's going to be it for this Neverwinter Elite Refinement Pack and the pack with these companions. So hopefully this has been somewhat helpful and insightful to you guys. Just to mention again, the drop rate for this Elite Pack is about 5% from those Refinement Packs. So it's up to you whether you want to be spending the Zen to obtain it or just don't take the gamble. And if you really need a Kasuna or want one, just purchase her off the auction house or if you want some other novelty companion from in here 
and purchase the pack, but it'll still be about 5,000 Astral Diamonds, and I doubt the prices are going anywhere. So hopefully this has been somewhat helpful to you guys. If you're lucky, you can definitely make a profit off this, but if you're not, well, yeah. Anyway, if I presented this well, consider leaving the video a like, and if you're new around here, consider subscribing. I will see you guys around. Goodbye for now.